So in this week's Wilmington Biz Talk, we're talking about hospitality jobs, especially as we look forward to the start of the summer tourism season, obviously a very important time of the year for our local economy. Um, but also after the announcement yesterday from uh, Governor Cooper about many of the COVID-19 restrictions being lifted starting June 1st. So what that means is that events and restaurants and other uh, indoor facilities that had seen restrictions will now be able to be fully opened, assuming that um, COVID metrics don't take a reversing course. But the backdrop of all of this is help wanted signs. We're already seeing them around town at many stores and restaurants and other establishments. And so when restaurants and attractions are able to fully open and more tourists come into our area, what's going to happen then? And will it be even more difficult to find enough jobs to meet the demand uh, for the summer season? So joining us today is a variety of folks who do work in the hospitality uh, sector and work uh, with the area businesses, as well as with area students who are going into that um, those types of jobs to see if there's other ways that we can um, discuss what solutions might be going into the season. So just to start off broadly, um, and Kim, maybe you can kick, kick us off since you talked to many of the members of the CVB um, in, your, in the Tourism Development Authority Board, just uh, fill us in a little bit about what you're hearing from members and what the employment situation looks like now. Well, as we know, Vicki, um, tourism, the numbers as far as a, a hus the hospitality and tourism sector was undoubtedly the hardest hit um, sector whenever it came to employment. Um, we were actually um, on a, our um, webinar yesterday with the Visit 365, the North Carolina Tourism Conference was going on virtually. And so we were able to pick up some stats. And according to them, um, Actually, North Carolina industry overall, 16%, um, they were the leading industry as far as employment loss. And um, it was up to some areas, 56% of our employee, employees were unemployed as a result of um, COVID and the effect it's had. So it's been a very, very hard hit industry. One of the advantages we've had though on the other side is, is our destination has been one of the destinations that we've seen bounce back pretty fast. Um, as far as our beach areas, especially Wilmington still um, occupancies down, that type of thing. But we're seeing the people back. Um, I've heard comments from some of our industry partners that their um, last couple of weekends actually have looked like July 4th numbers. I mean, people are everywhere. If you've been to the beaches, if you've been downtown. And so, you know, we're running into the problem. And of course, the panelists are going to share, you know, some actual firsthand experience. I know Tom will of not having enough employees though. Um, like you said, they have not come back. There's a lot of, you know, um, different um, factors out there of why we feel like, you know, some of them have not returned to work, but the jobs are there. The um, need is there. And, you know, we're gonna see that even kick off um, as we see a, what we're predicting to be a very strong summer um, season for us. And Tom, I do want to turn to you next. And before I do, I should point out, if you're watching our feed live on the Business Journal's Facebook page, if you post questions on there, um, I will keep an eye out for them and pass them on to the panelists. But Tom, like Kim mentioned, you are probably seeing this firsthand um, at the Courtyard Hotel down in Carolina Beach. Um, I want to point out, and this is kind of an anecdotal I guess, reinforcing of what we're talking about, but I had a difficult time finding a, a hotel official that could even have the time to join us on this week's show um, because they were filling in for shifts because they're um, downstaffed. And so I guess I have a funny way to ask this question to lead into you, but tell me what your day is like today. Uh, my day, my day started off at uh, about seven, uh, seven o'clock, just arrived in the hotel and, and working the front desk, actually. And I received your email this morning about eight o'clock. I was working the front desk until about 11. And then I have a little break to get some of my admin work done. And about two o'clock, I'll shift gears and jump over to housekeeping. And that seems to be our new norm for the time being. Um, so our days are, are quite full. Um, staffing is, is challenging. And um, I think from our perspective, we're trying to think of every possible scenario that we could possibly do in order to attract good associates over to the hotel. Um, you know, we've done things as far as incre increasing our, our wages, offering bonus programs. Um, we have a rejuvenation station and set up in our break room where they can come and get snacks and um, stay hydrated. And um, like if we tell our leadership team, the main focus here now is really associate retention and really keeping those 
associates that we do have working happy and, and, and pleased. Um, but it's, it's challenging. And we can talk in a minute a bit more about what you all think is driving um, the issue, but I'm curious, Tom, is it all positions that you're having difficulty filling? I know you just describing your day, it sounds like you are wearing multiple hats around the hotel. And this is something I've heard from other hotel uh, management as well, but it, is it in particular types of jobs? No, um, we have every position you could possibly imagine open at the hotel, from maintenance, engineering, to front desk, um, or bistro, um, you know, or even bar. Um, you know, actually, which we can't get open right now because of the um, staffing levels, you know, in, in front desk. So every position uh, we're actively hiring and looking for. Okay, and Diane, you are coming at it from the perspective of working um, with the hospitality program at CFCC um, in the hospitality management program. So you, you work with students who are trying to get into this sector, into this industry, possibly students who may or may not be you know, working while they're doing their studies as well. What are you hearing um, from your end? Well, this is, this is my, I'm going into my 28, uh, just, this is my 28th year at the college. And our average age of student is 28. So they're already in industry. They want to step up from where they're at. They feel like they've kind of hit a ceiling or something and they're working. They're already working in industry. Now, that said, um, I do have actually starting in fall of 2019, I have more high school students than I've had in memory. And then those are students who are interested in this industry and they're taking classes at area high schools. We also have a SeaTac high school. So those are more entry level folks. They're in Pender County and then they're in New Hanover County. Um, so my students who are already in industry, they may be looking for something better. So for example, I had a student that was at one restaurant and now he's accepted a salary position in food and beverage at another restaurant's hotel. So that's a bigger job. They have catering, they have better salary and benefits. So they're attracted, the 28 year old that maybe has children and a mortgage they're looking for better salary and benefits and, and something that's solid. The high school student, you know, they're looking for something more entry level. And you know, if they're in Pender County, I'm doubtful they're gonna go down to Carolina Beach, just realistically, but I, I think that, well, I'm gonna stop now until you have another question. Okay, so let's jump into the next question and, and whoever wants to start can, can kick us off. Um, can you, from you guys having your perspective inside the industry, um, explain a little bit about what's driving this? Why is, has this all, all of a sudden become an issue or is this something that has been building uh, throughout the pandemic? It's... People lost their jobs. But, or uh, you know, businesses were down. I mean, everybody knows this. And people, uh, restaurants had to shut down, reopen, shut, people weren't tipping as much. I mean, some businesses retooled and did more delivery, but you know, people sought jobs elsewhere. Some of them did. I, I had students who went to the grocery sector, prepared foods, you know, that kind of a thing. Although a lot of them, they're, they stuck with it the whole time. You know, they're, they really love this industry. Um, I think that's because people in our program are people that really want to be in industry. Well, I know from our perspective and what some of the things that we're hearing from the research, you know, we get weekly research and we go in and, and try to follow that. 
is, you know, it is a very competitive market right now. Um, like you're saying, there's lots of jobs open. There's lots of people out there. A lot of people, I mean, to be honest, though, when the unemployment incentive, um, you know, those extra dollars that were given for unemployment, a lot of them were making more money staying home and receiving that extra $300 or so a week than they would if they were, you know, especially when you had your entry level, some of, um, you know, your housekeeping jobs. You know, we heard Tom say that, you know, they've looked at raising their wages. One of the things we heard yesterday that, you know, the research is showing that, you know, you're going to have to be creative. You know, people are starting to look at, you know, still expecting services. We get our visitors back. You know, we, we don't want them to leave our destination because the service is poor or, you know, slow and that type of thing. So it's a real challenge of, you know, how do we do keep up our level of service and even have better service with less staff? So, you know, there's many challenges out there. Um, you know, one of the things, of course, they were saying was, you know, they're going to almost be forced to have higher wages in order to get some of these people back into the job market again. And mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, Tom, are you seeing that as well in terms of competing against the extension of the um, enhanced unemployment benefits? So we should mention that that's, you know, was most recently extended through September, which will be throughout the, the summer season. Um, and that's the additional federal unemployment uh, weekly wages that were added into the latest stimulus bill. So is that something that comes up when you are talking to applicants or you think um, causing like a, just a drop in applicants in general? Yeah, I would agree with, I definitely agree with that. Um, as, as far as we're concerned, we're not seeing an applicant flow um, here. And there's a couple of factors in that. One is, is definitely the unemployment benefits. Um, two is our location too, as well. We have to draw, you know, we have to cross the bridge in the Carolina Beach, and uh, and so make that very attractive to our citizens. Um, uh, so just as Kip mentioned, we we're trying to be creative and really take care of take care of our associates. Make this a, a it already is a great place to work, but really let people know the benefit that we offer, you know, and and. Uh, and Aggressive hospitality, you know, that's really what it's all going to come down to. A lot of our services, um, stay over service is um, not taking place right now. Um, so it's all about the, ex the guest experience and the hospitality, too. So, Tom, how do you guys go into planning then for the summer season when you're not quite sure what your available labor force is going to be? Um, right now, actually, we're strategizing that now as we, um, as we speak with the leadership team. Um, again, we're um, focusing on recruiting efforts, working with our corporate office about that too as well. Um, word of mouth, um, associate referrals, um, we're paying bonuses for that. Um, talking, um, actually we put in a place a, a bonus program for each department. Um, so they could be um, bonused, you know, during our busier time when the, uh, when the hotel is more profitable um, and increasing our early wages too as well, you know, to be more competitive in the market. You know, it's, it's also we're the only oceanfront we're in the state of North Carolina, you know, and so that makes us a great destination and a very busy one too as well. Um, the week of April, uh, Easter was actually like the, it really was like the 4th of July weekend here. There was wall to wall people, the beaches were full. You know, as fortunately though, some of our restaurants here in the boardwalk and stuff had to um, not allow dinner or takeout service because there was enough staffing, you know, to, um, um, mm -hmm to do that so it, it, it's a challenge in our area all around um working with local colleges you know um diana would love to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> i'm very popular right now. Yeah, yeah, best friend. Sure. <laughs> i would love, love, love to talk to you off the record and and share some information and positions that we have and we have everything from management positions open right now to um hourly positions well and i well. believe i've been to your property i don't know we i don't know if we met a few years ago or um but you know we've had students that have worked just everywhere in the area and we certainly have a range of folks with a range of aspirations and you know i have graduates who are now working internationally you know and then others who gosh that front desk job that was their dream. So, you know, community college is, it, it's an open door policy and we get 
a real range of people. We, we have a lot, we're a veteran friendly college. We get a lot of veterans who are changing gears and careers. So, and as I said, high school students, homeschooled students, you know, I may have a 15 year old in a class sitting next to a 45 year old. So it's, it's just, and I love our students. It's just a real range. We may have students that are staying at the homeless shelter. Um, so I really want to help them succeed as defined by them and get a good fit for that person. And that's just gonna be different depending on the person and their skill set. And as we know in this industry, um, there are different places for people. And I certainly wanna work with local industry to, to do that. Well, let's talk about that, um, that idea a little bit more um, and what the CVB's role is and perhaps doing some more of those connections. So I know that the um, spring semesters are ending soon for CFCC and UNCW and some of these students in those programs will be coming out. Can you fill us in or update us on, our, it sounds like you guys are taking a role in terms of trying to connect some of those students with some of these employers that are really in desperate need for people to be filling shifts. Can, can you tell us a little bit about what that um, initiative is about? Sure. Um, you know, one of the things that COVID has brought out, you know, for years, you know, our, our big focus and still is, is, you know, bringing people in from the outside. But COVID has brought about that we need to be actually a better liaison with our industry. So we have tried to look into these programs. We um, uh, have actually participated in the CTEC um, showcase that they've had one and they have another one coming up next week where the students can um, you know, meet with potential employers and of course, you know, hospitality, the restaurant part is part of that. We you know, um, reach out to Diane, we reach out to the um, department over at UNCW and, um, you know, with Alexia and look at, you know, some possible internships. We just, you know, we're trying to be that liaison between the industry and the educational community, especially, um, and get the word out that these programs are available. Just like, you know, Diane said, she has students that want to come and do these types of things. So we've been trying to be a better advocate um, for the community college and UNCW and the students they have coming out. And then, as I said, a better liaison to our industry partners to get that information out that you know these types of programs are um, available for them. So is there a way for employers um, to put out their job listings through the colleges? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, of course, yeah, I've been in touch with Kim and, and um, the Convention Bureau and Cape Fear Community College has a digital job board through our Career Center. And the, uh, they can just email me or Kim and she'll forward it to me. And then I will forward it to our Career Center person. And then there's instructions. The job, get, the job gets posted for the appropriate major hospitality management, culinary, baking and pastry arts, you know, whatever's appropriate. And both current students in those majors and alumni have access to that. And then within our departments, we've got kind of a template where you're describing the job. Is this seasonal? Is it part-time? Who do they contact? Just give this to us in a PDF or Word and we'll make an announcement to current students. And, and I think speaking before, please just be very realistic. If this is, you know, if this is an entry level seasonal job, just say so. Then it doesn't waste anybody's time that's you know, look, looking for a year round job and then vice versa, um, pay, all of that, um, pay range, you know, whatever that is. And, and we found that that's really helpful because, and then we'll, I can send that out to all my classes. Uh, we post to those sorts of things. So, yes. 
You guys both mentioned SeaTech, which we should point out is the Southeast Area Technical High School. Um, and Gwen, Gwen Gullickson, who runs the culinary program at C CFCC, but also at SeaTech with the high school students, had um, written into me as well, knowing that we were doing this today. And mentioning, pointing out, you know, the culinary students are in extremely high demand for those restaurant jobs. Um, and that at SeaTech, they're, they're 16 and they're able to be in the workforce. Um, at the college level, they usually have 100% employment after they leave the culinary program. So it, it seems like they're feeding um, some of the demand, but clearly not enough for the entire region and, and all the, the openings we have right now. Um, one thing I was kind of curious about, I was curious about along those lines of high school, and Tom, maybe you can let us know of who you see with the applicants, um, particularly on the entry level side of it or, or serving um, in restaurants and working at the hotel. Do, do you all see as many teens applying for jobs as maybe they used to? I personally have not. Um, I would love to actually, and, you know, especially um, it's a win-win for both of us. You know, our busy season and also the schools too as well when we're out of session. Um, but no, I have not seen a, a, a flow of um, high school applicants come, uh, come through our property. You know, we have all, all different jobs available. And um, another thing I'll take back on was cross training. That's how we're gonna make it through this summer is um, by cross training and working in different departments. You know, we have front desk associates right now that are cross trained in housekeeping, um, bistro associates that are cross trained to work in banquets because uh, we have a large bank facility here on property. Um, so it's, it's cross training is how we're gonna make it through the summer. And, and what a wonderful thing for front desk to understand how housekeeping works. Most definitely, I agree. That's how we and, Right. Um, and Kim, tell us a little bit about, so, you know, we're talking a lot about how um, it's impacting um, the, the local market, but I've been seeing coverage from um, places around the country having similar uh, um, issues of um, not having uh, enough employees to fill jobs for different reasons, many of those that we've talked about today. Um, but from your perspective, in terms of being the agency that markets tourism here and wants to make sure that tourists have good experience so that they come back and are repeat visitors and um, all that in word of mouth, how important is it to you to try to address this issue before um, folks start coming in and making sure that, you know, that there's enough staffing levels that they have the a tourism experience that's going to lead to, you know, them actually coming back and not being frustrated and upset because of long lines and long waits and, um, you know, limited restaurant hours and all the potential things that might happen if there's not enough staffing. Right. Well, you know, as I said earlier, you know, we've got to be responsive to the supply and demand. You know, we know they're coming um, research is showing over 87% of those um, that were surveyed are planning a trip within the next six months. We know that we have our destination that is just prime and ready for the summer. Um, I guess you could say influx. You know, you've got a lot, you know, they were calling it yesterday. It was funny. You know, they said that we were having revenge travel. You know, people have been pent up. It's their revenge. They're going to get back out. And we're excited that we're one of those types of destinations that people feel very safe and in coming into. You know, one of the things that was also mentioned yesterday in some of the research they're showing, you know, they're talking about different business models, just like Tom said, you've got to be creative. You know, we've got to figure out how we can get people back into the workforce, but of course we can't force them. So if not, then how are our restaurants and our hotels and our attractions going to work at this level? As you said, repeat business is so important to our destination. We have a lot of repeat visitors. So we've got to make sure their experience here is good when they are here so that they will come back and tell others about us. Um, one of the things though, on the, on the downside of all this, you know, if we look at it just like Tom's saying, you know, they're willing to pay higher wages. I'm sure our restaurants are looking at, but someone has to take that additional cost of what it's going to, you know, so if we keep seeing wages go up, we're going to see prices go up as well. So we have to be very mindful that there's a balance between just how high can the wages go and yet still be a destination that people don't think that we're outpricing ourselves. So, you know, a lot's going on to this whole mix and we want to be there for our industry. Again, that's one of the reasons we're, um, we you know, want to thank you for putting, you know, helping us put this together to get the word out about the need. 
We're hoping this will let our business community see as well and hopefully get the word out as they're looking for people that need jobs. And then also um, we'll continue to work with our industry, work with the university and work with Cape Fear Community College and CTEC and try to be, again, as I said earlier, that liaison that helps bring this about because it is an issue, it's a real problem, but we wanna help be part of that solution as we move forward. I do think the wage issue is a national one in this industry. I don't think it's, well, just here we need to raise wages. I think the whole industry is seeing if right. we wanna keep people, if we wanna get turnover down, isn't, aren't people who, as Tom is doing right now, who can multitask yeah. and do it very well, maybe fewer are worth more money than a larger stable who are paid less. And, and augment that with some of the technology. The last trip I took pre-COVID, I checked into my room, I selected a room on my phone, checked in, got a digital room key, all on my way from the airport to the hotel. I, I mean, I said hey to the front desk on my way in, but I didn't have to wait in line. Tom, is does your hotel offer that kind of digital? We do have a digital key. Yep, we do have a mobile check-in too as well. We do. I but mean, here, our location, which is quite unique, um, you know, our guests like to interact with us, especially the front office. Um, we're the destination, um, Wilmington, Carolina Beach, Wrightsville Beach, uh, and we're our staff is the professionals on that. So we also act as a concierge too. Great dining recommendations, things oh, to yeah. do, head downtown, the battleship. So um, me personally speaking, and working the front desk as much as I have, um, here at this particular property, I see more face-to-face -face interaction. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, and, and as I said earlier, that's something we don't want to lose. And, right. you know, because we're known for that. We're known for our, you know, wonderful hospitality awesome. here in our destination. And, um, but, you know, to your point, yes, this isn't just a local issue. This is a, na a national issue. As I said yesterday on our webinars, um, you know, these are the, some of the leading tourist um, or tourism um, analysts and researchers. And this, you know, this issue keeps rising to the top is about, you know, the employment issue. So it's something that we're faced, like you said, not just as a destination here, but, you know, through the U.S. And, you know, how do we solve that? You know, so and again, creativity is going to be one of the ways. Um, and I think, Tom, y'all are really, you know, looks like to me really working through and and trying to find some ways to be creative, to be still give that wonderful guest experience. But yet, you know, be able to do it with less staff. And, and that might help with the turnover issue, mm -hmm. which has plagued this industry for so long. I tell my leadership team, you know, almost weekly, we have two types of guests in house, internal, external, and they both need to be treated the same. And um, so, um, yeah, aggressive hospitality and taking care of, you know, our internal and external guests is what it's all about. That's how we do it. Well, I want to thank all three of you for joining us today and giving us some insight about what's uh, driving these trends. In some ways, I feel like it's almost come full circle or, or bookend of, I know last year, um, Kim, when we uh, talked about a year ago, much of the discussion was how were hotels and restaurants going to face a sudden drop in, in closures and the loss of business. And now it seems like how are we going to prepare for maybe even more business than we can handle. Um, right. So I guess it's a it's a maybe a better problem to have than, than you all had last year, but still still an issue that's going to need some, like you said, some solutions and connections. Um, we will be sure to include um, our guests Con our names in today's coverage, and as well as I think the job board was mentioned um, earlier from CFCC, where um, employers can also try to match up some of those, those openings with the students there. We'll be sure to include that in the article as well. Um, but thank you to everyone who has tuned in today and also to our guests to, um, to kind of share this insight with, uh, with us this afternoon. 
Next week, we'll be back same time, or actually we'll be back on Wednesday next week, same time though at noon. Um, and we'll be talking about the airport's terminal expansion project and getting an update on where that stands. So thank you to everybody and I hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.